Hi everyone, my name is Hannah and it's another day of crafting. So today I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm making over there. And I'm gonna show you two projects. I'm gonna show step by step and let's get started. So I've been living the nanny life, taking care of some awesome kids. They wanted to be Blastoise and Squirtle for Halloween, so I decided to DIY their costumes. The main component of these costumes are the 3D shells. I'm going to show the two different methods I use to make the shells and then how I accessorize each one. Someone was excited to help me get started on his costume. The first piece we needed was a long rectangle about shoulder width apart with the top and bottom slightly curved. We also needed two leaf-shaped pieces. Once I got home, I carefully curved each piece and used scotch tape to line up the sides. Then I used hot glue to secure the pieces together. This part needed a lot of patience to bend the cardboard and make sure the glue had enough time to dry. Now that the basic shell is done, it's time to add some Blastoise details. The bottom of the shell is actually curved inward for the tail. So I drew what I would call as a former statistics teacher a beautiful normal model curve. I definitely should have drawn this on the inside, it would have been way easier to cut. The shell has lots of curves, so I cut out smaller normal models all around the shell. For the cannons, I cut out a small trapezoid and two triangles. This required a lot of trial and error as the shell is curved, but the nice thing is once you have one done, you can use it as a stencil for the other. And like before, I use scotch tape and hot glue to secure the pieces together. I wanted to try a different method that did not require bending the pieces. I started off with a hexagon and then used that central piece to draw six surrounding trapezoids. To make the shell 3D, I shortened the longer side of the trapezoid. Since the shell is symmetrical, once I had the three pieces of one side done, I used them as stencils to cut out the other side, making sure to clearly label each piece. Although this method required more prep, I noticed it was way easier to glue the pieces together since I didn't have to bend any cardboard. Now that the basic structure of the shells are done, it's time to paint. I found this leather brown spray paint with a gloss finish at Home Depot. I finally convinced my husband to craft with me, so this is his first time spray painting.
Then I used black acrylic paint to add the lines on the shell. This was easy with the seven piece shell since the lines were exactly where I glued the pieces together. With the three piece shell, I had to freehand most of the lines. The design wasn't as proportional as the other shell, but I think it still looked pretty similar. I came across the perfect material for the shell border in the plumbing section at Home Depot. Scotch tape and hot glue were my best friends this project. I started on the inside of the shell in case I messed up and put extra glue on the parts that curved inward. I used almost the entire tube for one shell, which was 72 inches. For the Blastoise shell, I decided to try the foam tube with adhesive which was only a dollar more but was way easier and faster to put on. The border of the shells are white, so I stuck some old teaching worksheets behind the foam to protect the top of the shell. I used white acrylic paint and painted several coats. I like to use old prescription bottles when I have to do several coats so I can save paint while I'm waiting for a layer to dry. You can see here the difference between three coats on the left and one coat on the right. Since the paint started to flake off, I had to use Mod Podge to add a protective coat. It was actually the boy's idea to save these Pringles cans for me to make the cannons. I wanted to use silver vinyl to cover the cans. Since the vinyl is a little see-through, I tried to take off as much of the outer layer as possible. I also painted the inside black with acrylic paint. I had extra foam left and dried out markers. I hot glued the marker cap on the bottom of the Pringles can and glued the foam onto that. This way the foam would be sturdy. I put more vinyl on the foam and hot glued the cannons into place. The cannons are probably one of my favorite parts of this project. For Blastoise tail, I cut out these three pieces and hot glued them together. Then to get the kids involved, I had them paint the tails. For the second shell, I originally made a squirtle tail, but lately this kid's favorite line is just joking and he said he wanted to be war turtle, so we're going to give this tail to the baby brother. War Turtle's tail is a little more intricate. There are three main pieces, two swirls on top and bottom and a middle piece. I used a pool noodle and cut out little triangles so that the noodle would be easier to roll up.
Then I used hot glue to curl the noodle and used scotch tape and rubber bands to help keep its shape. I repeated this with the top swirl. Once I had the top and bottom done, I used those to mark where I needed to cut for the middle section. Lots of trial and error, so I made sure not to cut too much at a time. After some paint, I think it turned out pretty well. Finally, I used some old t-shirt yarn I made to create adjustable straps. Thank you for watching! I had so much fun making this and seeing the kids' excitement was definitely worth it. I hope this video gave you some ideas or inspiration. Let me know in the comments if I should try another Pokemon. If you would like to see more, you can also follow me at Paper and Leaf on Instagram. Bye!